Beautiful. Thank you so much, Joanne. Good morning. And good morning to all of you who are joining us by live stream this morning. Glad you can be with us in this way. So my topic today is love, love, love. <laughs> Some may recognize that as the opening lyrics to the Beatles song, All You Need Is Love, right? Love, love, love. But it also comes from the teachings of Jesus. Love, love, love. He taught us to love thy neighbor as thyself, meaning that it is assumed that we should love ourselves. And he also taught us that we should love our enemies, neighbors, self, enemies. Wow, that's a tall order. Not a whole lot of room for withholding love, is there? Well, you know, unless you're really into loopholes, because, you know, he <laughs> doesn't really talk about those family members that drive us crazy or coworkers or bosses. But I think we get the point, right? That the teaching is pointing us to opening to unconditional love for ourselves and others without exceptions. And I hate to break it to you, but it wasn't that this one rabbi many, many years ago just had this vision and shared it. Uh, this idea of learning to love unconditionally reverberates through all the major faith traditions. And in the teachings of the Buddha, we have the idea that love in the form of compassion, having compassion, is never one-sided that if we really want to develop compassion, we should have compassion for ourselves and all others, whether or not we or they are the perpetrators or victims of suffering. So we have to learn to love ourselves and everyone else. So I was thinking about this, and I'm going to quote Dr. Barkin saying, my take on this today, I may change my, my mind later, but if there's one area that we can really take heart, I think, and be encouraged by is of these three, I really think as a human race, we've made a lot of progress in the love your neighbor idea. If we think of our neighbor as anyone other than ourselves, be it that family, that person next door, uh, or in a neighboring community, a neighboring country, you know, people who are a little bit different from us. They may have different customs, different values, traditions, ways of being in the world. And I think because of the facility of world travel now, it's so much easier for people to travel one, from one place to another. The ways we communicate now through automation, on the internet, on Facebook, on so many of uh, you know, our media nowadays, we've had to interrelate, interconnect a lot more. And I think we've made tremendous progress in accepting our differences, our different ways of being. I'm not saying that there isn't a whole heck of a lot of room for improvement. But I know that in my lifetime, you know, I've seen dramatic absolutely dramatic changes to the way people are able to accept and even to be curious about each other's differences and want to learn about them and understand them. So I'm glad we made progress there. And again, I'm not living in the delusion that we've handled that completely. There's a lot more that we can do. But when we look at these edicts of you know, love thy neighbor, love thyself, thy, love thine enemy. I think the one that probably stands out the most that we go, oh, wait a second, I don't want to have to get into that one, is love thine enemy, right? Who wants to love those who have been against us, who have hurt us, whose actions are just so objectionable? But you know, honestly, when I look at this idea, I think we struggle just as much with the loving ourselves as we do with loving our enemies. Have you ever heard the statement, 
I'm my own worst enemy? Does that sound at all familiar to anyone? You don't need to raise your hand. <laughs> Can any of us relate to that? I remember Dr. Bark uh, throwing out this idea years ago of if we had a megaphone that was attached to our brains that was blasting out to the world our thoughts and what we're saying about ourselves internally, and people thought we were saying that about them, how far do we think we would get? Interesting, huh? One of my spiritual coaches, uh, Reverend Patrick Harbula, in doing spiritual coaching around self-love, invites people to work with the idea, I love myself no matter what. I love myself no matter what. Try that on for a second and notice if there isn't just a part of you that goes, no matter what? No, <laughs> I can't, seriously. You know, there's this underlying belief system that we can't love ourselves under certain conditions. I mean, love ourselves if we fail, love ourselves if we really, really mess up, if we hurt someone else. And then I think if we take that statement and then, in following the teachings of Jesus, try to use it with, I love my neighbor no matter what. Notice some resistance? I don't know that we need to add that part to I love my enemy. I think we resist that automatically. <laughs> uh, no matter what, I don't want to even consider the idea, I think is where we go quite often. And here's what I think this is really about. Whether we're challenged in loving ourselves, loving our neighbor, or loving our enemies, I think it all points back to the same basic mindset. It all points to a belief system that tells us there's a dividing line between being lovable or unlovable. And when that line is crossed, we or others are absolutely not deserving of love. And I think where this comes from is, you know, from the time we were little, when we were so dependent on others to show us the ways of the world and help us navigate through life, our parents, others who were there to show us the way, as they raised us and needed to give us guidance when we weren't showing up at our best, and showing up at our best meaning we might have been misbehaving, or maybe we just weren't realizing that greater potential in ourselves that they were trying to get us to step into. And you know what happened is that they were in some way telling us, you are not being enough. It wasn't necessarily that they didn't love us or that they weren't coming from a very loving place. They were just trying to teach us how to live up to our potential, but it felt to us like in that moment we were hearing, you are not lovable in this situation. You are not lovable unless. And when we adapted and corrected the behavior, when we showed up in the way that they were encouraging us, suddenly they loved us again. So we associated this, what felt like, unloving, berating voice with one that was there to keep us on track, to do well, to be valued. And because our core nature of God is about love, we want to know all the time that we are loved. So we are going to do whatever it takes to show up in ways that people love and appreciate us. And so we then internalized that berating voice and that was the voice that is there to keep us on track, to make us show up in our best ways, in ways that others will appreciate it. And that, that was bad. Don't try or you'll fail. You don't want that to happen. You don't want to fail in front of others. You shouldn't act that way. You shouldn't feel that way. Shape up. Any of these sound familiar? And that belief system about what makes us either lovable or unlovable, and that berating voice is then directed outwardly to others, 
to our neighbor, to our enemies, when they're showing up in ways that we don't feel are appropriate. appropriate. You know, and sometimes the ideas about how we're not showing up to our, uh, you know, at our best actually were very valuable. You know, there are many things that we were taught about how we were being self-centered, selfish, we weren't seeing the bigger picture, you know, learn to be kinder. Some may not have been, some may have been others just imposing those values upon us. You know, but the point is, I think we need to understand that all of us at some point aren't going to show up at our best. We're all in the process of awakening to our divine potential. And so we'll all have times that we lose sight of that goodness of God that lies within us and not show up experiencing or expressing it to the fullest. But that does not mean that we are not lovable still in the eyes of God, in the eyes of unconditional love. Remember, unconditional. It's not whether about you change that behavior or show up in a better way. There's still a vibration of love that holds you in this uh, state of love. You know, the idea of loving ourselves no matter what, the idea of loving others no matter what, I think, I think it evokes a sense of giving ourselves or others carte blanche to show up and behave any way we want or they want. But I think we have to realize that loving ourselves no matter what is not, is absolutely not about giving up the intention to show up at our best. It's not about not being willing to take responsibility. It's not about not being willing to admit to our errors and to correct. And loving our neighbor or loving our enemy no matter what doesn't mean that it's OK and that we have to be OK for them to show up when they show up in you know, unkind and unloving ways, when they do things that perpetrate suffering. What it is, is it's about bringing the vibration of love, of understanding, of compassion, to those instances where we're not being all we are or they are not being all they could be. It's about recognizing our error or their error, but bringing an attitude of there's a greater potential in me and in them than this behavior, than what they're saying or doing. It's about asking, what might have gotten in the way for me to not recognize and come from a, a loving and good place? What might have gotten in their way that you know, is causing, causing them to behave in this way? And this isn't just doing this to show up and be a good person so that God will love us. This isn't about that. When we really practice this ability to stay in a vibration of love for ourselves and others, it keeps us in that feeling of love, of our core divine nature. It keeps us feeling our connection to God. It keeps us in a vibration where we can still feel peace. It allows us to focus on the solution, make good of a situation, versus just spending all our energy condemning the problem. What we focus on increases, right? Don't we say that all the time? Where do you want your attention? The problem and the hurt it brings up or the solution and moving beyond the problem. And so I've recently been rereading some of the works of uh, the Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh. And it's been very helpful for me to explore, again, his idea of bringing a gentle and loving smile to our meditation practice. When we get still and we just sit there noticing our thoughts and feelings and what comes up, to just hold the space of a gentle, loving smile as we notice those thoughts, even the fear-based ones, even the, the angry thoughts, the turmoiled thoughts. But what he's inviting us to do is to call forth this part of us, which we in Science of Mind would say, is God's nature in us that's untouched, 
to call forth that part of us that can look at the thoughts, that can look at what we're thinking about others' behaviors, our own behaviors, with this gentle, warm, loving smile that reassures us, you are not your thoughts. You are not your thoughts. You are not your actions. There's a greater presence in you than what you're feeling, what you're thinking, or how you're acting right now. And if it feels hard to do that, then I just say, you know, call on spirit. Call on that part of us that lies within all of us that just, you know, call it forth as a presence in us that can help us see that greater potential in ourselves, that can help us see that greater potential in others, and to let that guide us into experiencing and expressing that greater potential. So, you know, there's this whole thing that when a minister picks a title for a talk, suddenly the universe will provide the minister with all kinds of opportunities to walk the talk. <laughs> and so this week, <clears throat> I, as many of you know, I'm the president of the uh, HOA board at my condominium, and we've been overseeing a very large project of replacing uh, some hot water pipes on the roof, and the project was completed on Thursday morning, and when they turned on the hot water, in about an hour, one of the pipes burst, and 11 condominiums were flooded. <laughs> um, Did I mention I was part of the team that helped organize this and oversee it? Do you think I may have had a few opportunities to say, this is all my fault, I'm awful, how could I have done this to everyone? Um, my very loving neighbors, seeing those of us who were involved in the project, some of them don't always show up in loving ways. <laughs> some felt more like enemies in the way they were attacking. But I have to tell you, uh, to have this practice has just been such a gift. I can't even, I can't even em emphasize how much because I was able to go to this place of feeling that presence of that loving, gentle smile that lo could look at the ways I was beating myself up and just know, okay, look, these thoughts are very unreasonable. This isn't all on you. And then in that space, I could see, okay, now I can see some things we could do differently or could have done differently, but that was informative. And rather than feel diminished, it created a sense of inspiration to do things differently going forward that would help affect the solution. And instead of you know, har harboring those feelings of how everyone else was just being so unfair and unreasonable and judgmental, I was able to just look and say, I don't have to agree with the behavior, but I can look and just say, these loving beings, these expressions of God are right, caught up in a moment of frustration and anger. I'm looking at the frustration and anger. It's not who they truly are. It opened me up to the feeling of peace, of compassion, and of finding ways to move forward constructively. And so having walked this journey and seen how powerful this practice was, I'm going to invite us all this week to just try practicing with that idea of invoking that gentle, loving, smiling presence within us as we look at ways that we're feeling negatively about ourselves and others. And know that it's there to help us release those con condemning attitudes, those ways that prevent us from seeing the greater good in ourselves and others. And let's let us sh allow that presence show the way into expressing more of our divine potential and hold the space in consciousness for others to do the same. It's all about call, calling forth and opening up to more of God's nature in us. Calling forth and opening up to more love, 
love, love. That's always the answer. So again, thank you to those of you who have joined us by live stream. Let's pray. Thank you. And so as we join in consciousness right here, right now, let us absolutely turn to that part of us, to that, that gentle, loving smile energy that is a vibration of love out of which everything comes into being. It is the love of God out of which everything and everyone is created, including me, including each and every person here, every being everywhere. Everyone is filled and surrounded with that nature of God, which is at its core love. And so I declare right here, right now, for each of us, that where there is a line in our consciousness that says, beyond this line, I cannot love. I have to withhold love. We are willing to release that right now. We are willing to open up to allowing that love to always hold us in love, to be a loving energy that we can look at the ways that we may not show up at our best and let love guide us into the way to show up in a bigger way. And I know that we can hold that same vibration for others and since we're all interconnected, somehow it lifts them also into a greater awareness and experience and expression of that love within them. We let this prayer be a prayer for all our loved ones, for all situations in the world that are calling to our attention. We just know that God and God's love is at the center of it all, revealing a greater good. I know we are blessed by coming together as a community, and so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And with a full and grateful heart, I just release this word. I open up to the infinite love of spirit. And I simply allow it to be saying, and so it is. And together we say, Amen.